uh, take a short episode and uh, let's get started, okay? Yes, with pleasure. Hi, Shalom, it's Dr. Christine Sauer and I'm excited to have you on the show. Uh, tell Christine. us a little bit about who you are, what you're doing, and then we'll get started. With pleasure. Shalom, Christine. Thank you for creating this opportunity. Uh, my name is uh, Rabbi Dr. Moshe Peretz. I live in Israel. I have studied medicine in Brussels, in uh, the University of Brussels, up to 10,010. Have moved to Israel 12 years ago, worked in uh, hematology, uh, stem cell research, and longevity and the end of aging and death in the Hebrew University in Jerusalem for a number of years. And uh, for the past uh, five years, I'm working on psychotherapy as I developed a unique methodology called deep soul therapy. I treat mainly patients throughout the world, in Australia, in the United States, in Europe, as uh, people suffering with anxiety, depression, bipolarity, schizoaffective disorder, um, um, and other uh, troubles, uh, including immunitary diseases. Uh, we address that in a unique way in a cycle of seven weeks where we try to address the root of the soul and to uproot the cause of the disease. Wow, that is really amazing. So tell us a little bit how, in your opinion, faith and mental health are related. Okay, that's an excellent question. And in fact, throughout my medical career, that's one of the most critical factors, as I saw that people would come again and again and again. A person that suffered with depression could suffer from this for 20 years. As long as we would not treat the root cause of the problem, which was its unique connection to the source of life, who is the creator of all existence. Faith is that leap of humanity into the unknown where without that, it's impossible for the soul to truly connect with the body and to transfer its energy back and to heal the organ, which is affected mostly what I'm dealing with currently, right? Before it was the uh, bone marrow with uh, people suffering from, from leukemias currently is mainly uh, the, the brain, of course. And uh, as I studied psychoneuroimmunology and really saw that patients that would lose a partner throughout the six months, they would develop a cancer. Nobody could have an answer to that. So of course, it's widely accepted that a, a emotional trauma does cause immunosuppression. Now, people cannot, current medicine has no tools to deal with that and to help patients. So I, I had to make a long search and work in order to try to do a, a, as best as I can and to help patients with that problem. And of course, Judaism uh, generates this series of tools that we provide. And we have many, many studies in Torah Or, in a conference that we have every year in Miami, that provide greater results to patients that are actually connected to faith. And it needs to be an authentic, genuine, comprehensive uh, uh, um, uh, connection and not something irrational or something uh, of unknown origin it has to come back to the authentic primordial source where everything began. Wow. Now, this is, I think, a very, very important part that is certainly missing in modern medicine. Now, tell us about you, uh, your specific approach. You are trained as a rabbi, so you're extremely knowledgeable on all things related to the Bible, Judaism. Um, what do you see as a real source? And I mean, when it comes to, to, to faith related, many people that might listen to that maybe are Christians. And of course, Jesus was a Jew, so <laughs> Judaism is a much older religious tradition than Christianity. And we are trying to actually have bridge those different faiths and go to the real root that there is a creator. And how do you see that being a representative, really, of the Judaic religion in a way? So 
to put things very clearly and transparent, the model of life and to the human soul was revealed to the Jewish people on Mount Sinai. And that is the authentic, clear, transparent guide for life and for the fulfillment of its potential. Hashem has entrusted us to this group of human beings called the Jews, the guidelines to fulfill life, to bring back eternity into the body. That's my research in the laboratory of Professor Eli Keshet in VEGF, Vascular Endothelial Growth Factor. And of course, many are those that tried to copy or to implement those very deep principles without never having sit with actually a Jew to discuss if this is the right way to actually do it. So, of course, as you and I know, if a patient comes to you and says, doctor, you know what? Uh, he comes with a problem of diabetes and you're an endocrinologist and he comes and says, you know what? I went online and I learned and I studied and I read. So, you know what, doc, your diagnosis and your treatment doesn't, I don't, I don't agree with that. So, you have one and only one answer. So why did you come to see me? If you know better than I do, go and treat yourself. Okay? <laughs> That's first point. Second point, when the person has the humility and hopefully disease and death does not need to in enforce that sense of humility within a human being. And we have seen throughout the ages, the catastrophes that uh, other religions have generated throughout the world up to the day of today, death, the worship of death. It is, a, it, is a, it is a current theme throughout the history. So we see that when we take a very, very powerful knowledge and we try to implement it without the, 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 the advice, the study, the proper study with a Jew, the exact opposite, even though there could have been good intentions. If a patient comes and says, you know what? I discovered that if I shot myself with a, 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 a synthetic der derivative of insulin, I'm going to get better. And you know what happens with that, right? People generally, they end up in very bad shape. So um, very clearly, the Torah is the teaching for life. So Hashem is called, I'm, the, I'm Hashem, your healer, meaning I gave you a disease for you to come back to the source. That is the purpose, as there is a principle in Judaism that states, before Hashem created the problem, he already created the solution. So before he created the disease, he already created a cure. What is, now, some people would say, you know what? And of course we could go through the his histories and stories, etc. cetera. Bezat Hashem will have the opportunity to do so, but Judaism states clearly, why did Hashem gave diseases to the world? To generate an opportunity for people to come and redefine their unique connection with the essence of the source of life. And if that requires to come and meet and sit with a Jew, at least to spend a little bit of time to understand the purpose of his being on this earth, it was worthwhile. Of course, I do not want to make anyone suffer or that anybody suffers in order to, no, not at all. I went from this moment, Bezat Hashem, that everybody should be healthy and wealthy and we all doctors should be on vacation and Bezat Hashem, we enter into the definite redemption. That would be nice, yeah, if everybody would be healthy, wealthy and well, but this is not how uh, life really works on earth and I don't think our creator arranged it. And as you say, there was a purpose. And now I know this will be just a short glimpse into all that you have to give because we only have a very limited time today to just present what you have to give. And I can already see that there's threads that I would love to go deeper in and ask you questions about those roots that you mentioned, because that connection is amazing, especially when it comes to mental health and diseases, because our mind is powerful. And if we don't have that connection, as you mentioned, to Hashem said correctly or Allah or what what, do you, what would you say correctly I I'm I'm not a Jew I don't know the terminology but you do and that's exciting so 
to wrap it up and come to the end, I want to give you an opportunity to, for one, say something to the end, and to second, to if anybody's interested to connect with you, how can they do that? Uh, well, uh, through you or uh, soulmedicine.life and uh, uh, they can connect. Uh, the, 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 the exact term is Hashem, which means in Hebrew, the name. It's such a powerful name with such a, such a, a channel to access the, the infinite source of energy and of life that we only mention Hashem, the name. We don't pronounce the tetragrammaton, the Yudke Vavke, the four-letter name of Hashem, uh, because the energy is so powerful that we do not pronounce it. We actually, it's one of the first sessions. It is the first session, actually, that I have with generally with a patient. I actually show him the full map of his soul, the disclosure of that four-letter name of Hashem, how it expresses in his intellect, his emotions, and his deeds. Of course, there is a supra-conscious level, uh, which generally is called in classical psychology the uh, unconscious. We call it the superconscious, which is actually those three elements, faith, pleasure, and willpower. And of course, we try to tap back onto them. So the person reacquires real willpower and tries to find, again, that pleasure of living. The pleasure of living based in faith. Would you agree to that? It based, yes, faith, it is the it's like the umbilical cord while the baby's wind in his mother's womb you know it's it, it doesn't really taste things through his mouth but he is nourished so faith is that is that like umbilical cord of course throughout the process of the deep soul therapy that faith becomes trust it's like two people meeting for the first time they have faith in the intentions of each other throughout time and they get to know each other faith is no longer required it will become a thing of the past. They will actually know each other. They will trust each other because they come to know each other. So faith will be something of the past and knowledge will be something of our present and our future. I love the way that you position that, that the relationship of how faith becomes trust. That is amazing. So I know that's it for today. Thank you so much for this little glimpse and what all you have to give. You're an amazing person. I can't wait to meet you again. Have a wonderful, blessed day or what's the right term in Judaism to say goodbye? Is Leitraot. And we are about to enter Shabbat. So it's Shabbat Shalom. Uh, thank you very much, Christine, to uh, generate this opportunity. I'm very happy for us to have this encounter, you in Canada, me in Israel. And Bezat Hashem, we'll try to, uh, if everything goes well, on Fridays to have uh, Bezat Hashem uh, a little moment together and to uh, participate together in the redemption of humanity. And may every mom be healthy to take good care of his children and every human being, may he grow to achieve his full potential. Oh. Shalom Sabbat, correct? Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll see each other again. Wow, that, you know, that is amazing.